I'm Sarah Gore and this is Open House NYC. This week we're at a New York original in Brooklyn. And we see how this designer created a chic family home that's an ode to a life of fashion and travel. We explore this sunny art-filled renovation on the West Coast. Plus, we are inside one of my favorite places in New York, the Carlisle Hotel, with architect and designer Garo Kedigan. But first, hairstylist to the stars, Frederick Fakai invites us into his Fifth Avenue apartment. It has really a flair of being in Paris, sitting right across from Central Park. Welcome to Open House NYC, everyone. Today, I am coming to you from this impeccably designed townhouse on the Upper West Side, just steps from Central Park. At 22 feet wide with original bay windows, the classic facade belies the modern open gallery-like interiors that are perfect for entertaining in style, inside or out. The parlor level features chic living and dining areas, and downstairs you'll find a sleek chef's kitchen with easy access to the garden. Upstairs, the primary suite occupies the entire second floor and features a stately home office, generous bedroom, and let me just tell you, a dream dressing room. Feeling a bit more active? This home has got you covered with a basketball court and a gym. And when you're done, cool down on the finished roof garden. We are getting started this week on the Upper East Side at the home of famed hairstylist Frederick Fakai. Frederick's talents have taken him all over the world styling prominent power players of fashion, Hollywood, and even politics. But when he returns to New York, this classic Fifth Avenue apartment is where he calls home. Now he shows us around and it's filled with just the right amount of style and flair. Take a look. Hi, I'm Frederick Fekai, the founder of Fekai Brands, and welcome to my home on Fifth Avenue on the Upper East Side of New York. I've been living in this beautiful house since 2010, and I love it because it has really a flair of being in Paris, and the best part is that it's sitting right across from Central Park. As you exit the elevator, you enter right into your apartment and your entry foyer, which is lovely because it has beautiful mirror from the 18th century and an amazing marble floor. And just a few steps off the foyer, you enter the gallery, highlighted with a beautiful portrait of my son and a sculpture of me. Off this gallery, we have this lovely dining room where we love to entertain. But I want to show you this room. This is my study. The main feature here is this wood paneling that extends to the ceiling, which is highlighted with a curved lighting here and actually came from a castle in France. And one of my favorite places to relax in this lounging chair designed by the designer of the Concorde. And after I'm done lounging and I have to work, I'll do it right here sitting at this desk. This desk is from the 50s. I love this curvy shape because it fits perfectly in the corner. And after I'm done working, I go right to my living room to have my nightcap. This is my formal living room. I love this room because it's very peaceful and very cozy with a beautiful light coming from the Central Park. Do you hear this? Right, it's so quiet because we have double pane window. And one of my favorite things to do is to get a glass of wine, fantastic book, and sit by the fireplace. And I kept the Parisian chic feeling with the eclectic selection of furniture. For instance, I love this orange velvet satin comfortable chair and I also accented the room with a touch of chinoiserie. To tie the room all together I added a beautiful burnt orange Persian rug and when I'm done with my nightcap and ready to retire I go to the next room. Here 
here we are upstairs in my primary suite. This primary suite has the same feeling as the living room, very peaceful. And yet another fireplace to cozy up with and the infinite views of Central Park. To keep this primary suite very cozy, I cover the wall with a beautiful light gray fabric. And since we are up here, it's time to end the tour, to say goodbye, thank you for checking out my home. Coming up in just a few, we are on the Upper East Side with an open house favorite, Gerald Cadigan, in a New York classic. We'll be back in just a bit. Welcome back. Now we're at the famed Carlisle Hotel, one of my favorite places in New York City, with designer and architect Garo Kedigan. We've had the pleasure of seeing many of his projects over the years, so a tour of his brand new home was a must. Garo stayed true to his maximalist ethos to make his dream home a true showstopper. Take a look. Oh, and a sip. Hi all, Garo Kedigan here, New York City interior designer. I want to welcome you to my newest apartment on the Upper East Side. Ever since I moved to New York 20 years ago, I have been enamored by the Carlisle Tower, which really stands as a beacon over the Upper East Side. So when the opportunity came up to purchase an apartment here, I had to grab it. And even though I fell in love with the apartment right from the onset, there were a significant number of design challenges. But I'm super excited about how it turned out. Come, let me show you. Even though this is where I live, I always take the opportunity to make my private residences a showpiece. So the first thing I did was I raised all the ceilings throughout the apartment that had been dropped in the previous renovation. I was able to gain 16 inches in this foyer alone and uncovering the beautiful original details such as the moldings. Anyone who knows my work knows that I love deep saturated color and the entrance foyer was the perfect opportunity for this. I always tell my clients not to fight the darkness because it's actually natural for a dark space to be dark. The deep saturated blue color was accented by painted panel lines on the walls. This adds architecture where there is none. And I added this beautiful little filigree gingerbread along the bottom of the crown molding because after all, it is the Carlisle. And to augment the reflective quality of the high gloss paint, I added this antique mirror over this console to give you a glimpse of the living room. The color of this living room was inspired by two things. One, the fact that it is sun-drenched, and two, it is actually the classic color of the Carlisle. And of course, consistent with my design philosophy, everything had to be high gloss. For me, one of the most important benefits of this apartment was this outdoor space, and the French doors on the east wall of the living room became the focal point. So opposite from the doors, I put this wonderful mirror to reflect the light coming in, flanked on either side by these bookcases. If you know how to design things right, you can actually gain multiple seating groupings even in a small room such as this. In this one corner, I placed this fabulous tufted armless sofa, and I utilized this area for dining. And to top things off in any room, I always love to add an oversized canvas piece, such as this one over the banquette. It really helps anchor the room. And I use this technique even more successfully in the next space I'm gonna show you. See what I mean? Isn't he amazing? In fact, I designed the whole room around this. This was originally the primary bedroom of the apartment, actually, but because it is so sun-filled, I really wanted to take advantage of it during the daylight hours. So I decided to turn it into my library. And who hasn't always wanted a red room? In contrast to the high gloss surfaces of the entrance floor in the living room, I wanted to keep things a little bit more muted, a little bit more subtle in this space. But I still did incorporate a little bit of high gloss in this room by painting the ceiling. And I situated my work desk to take advantage of the view facing towards the second terrace. Because believe it or not, this apartment actually has two terraces. Welcome to my bedroom. This was actually the secondary bedroom in the apartment, but because it's so quiet back here and faces the internal courtyard, I decided to turn it into my primary. And everyone that knows me knows that I love canopy beds, and this was no exception. And again, a giant canvas to anchor the wall on this side over this desk, and a beautiful landscape painting over the sofa niche. Because if there was a window on this wall and not another apartment, you'd actually see Central Park.
And of course, the best part of living at the Carlisle is ending your day in this legendary Bevelman's Bar. Thank you so much for coming on this tour of my grand new apartment at the Carlisle. Cheers. Coming up in just a few, we are heading out west to this bright modern stunner in Marina Del Rey. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. Now we're at this modern townhome in Marina Del Rey with Greg Roth, senior designer at the firm Homefront Build. They reimagined this project to accentuate their client's world-class collection, opening it up to the natural light. The result is a modern art-filled abode that's personal, warm, and inviting. See what I mean? Hi, my name is Greg Roth. I'm senior designer at Homefront Build. We are a design build firm here in Los Angeles. This project is all about the artwork. The homeowners are world-class art collectors and the collection inside is mind-blowing. We've done everything we can to highlight that artwork by putting in furnishings that are comfortable and casual. We've opened the spaces, we've brought in light. So there are a lot of amazing things to see here on the property and I'd love to show you around. Let's get started. So the first thing we did is we created a front garden. The purpose of the garden really is to highlight the artwork that's in the center, which is a beautiful piece by a German artist group. And to do that, we created sort of a sea of black pebbles and the artwork floats in the middle of that. The first space in this area is the living room space. We kept the color palette neutral shades of blue, and rather than having loud moments of design, we're doing sort of soft moments where we have a subtle change of shades of color, but also subtle variations in texture. At the front area of the room, we have a sort of cocoon space that's completely surrounded by amazing artwork. In the middle of that space, we put a card table and a couple of chairs for casual gatherings, for cards or board games. For the built-in console, we chose to clad the piece in quartzite in a very subtle shade of gray. You can see that it's a beautiful piece that separates the two rooms. On the dining room side, it's full of shelves for displaying art books. And on the living room side, it's just a beautiful natural backdrop of stone. The downstairs area is a multifunctional space. So we have a living room and there's a small office space and even a little reading nook. So as with every room in the house, the clients really wanted the furnishings subdued and calming. One of the main pieces is the Persian rug. And then we played off of that for the color scheme of the room. So we brought in this neutral sofa and the cushions that are in shades of blush. And finally, we have sort of the hidden pièce de résistance in this room, which is that there's a hidden bed that makes this space actually also serve as a guest bedroom. So it's unexpected, and it's the moment where you get a lot of oohs and ahs. People just love it. It's really great. The primary bedroom now is all about the views. We're kind of up in the treetops. You end up above the canopy at the entry space, you can see the undulation of the copper cladding on the rooftop. And out of these new windows that have opened up the whole space, all you see is a great view of palm trees, which is amazing. Wait till you see the roof where the views accentuate the rooftops and beyond. It's really amazing. Let's go. So as you can see, Southern California, sunshine, this is an amazing place to spend the day and catch some rays. But when you want to get a little shade, you've had too much sun, we also provided some shade cover. So we built this amazing canopy over the rooftop that's got this undulating form, and we clad the underside of it in salvaged redwood, and the top of it is in copper. And overall, it makes a very, very comfortable place for hanging out. Well, that's the end of our tour of Art House Reimagined. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm going to stay here on the roof for a bit and take in some rays. Just after the break, we are back in Brooklyn at this chic and stylish family townhouse. We'll see you in just a few.
Welcome back, everyone. Now we're in bed Brooklyn at the brownstone of Carly Kushney. See for yourself. Hi, I'm Carly Kushney. I'm a designer, and welcome to my home in bed Brooklyn. My husband and I bought this brownstone about four and a half years ago, and we absolutely fell in love with it when we first saw it. And now I'd love to show it to you. This is our living space where we spend most of our time as a family. One thing I loved about this home was the high ceilings. It really feels really dramatic to sort of emphasize that. So I bleached the floor so it just felt even more expansive and really, really airy. So throughout my home, there's always this play between high and low. I have things that we've collected along our travels. So I have this custom TV console that is super sleek and clean. And also I have this lovely entryway with a last look mirror and a vintage chair. Now let me take you into the dining area. This is my formal dining area. This is a custom oak and glass table and vintage chairs. One of my favorite pieces is this bowl that weighs an absolute ton that my husband brought back from Morocco. So this bookshelf was discovered during the renovation. I placed a collection of our favorite bowls that we've collected over our travels. So I wanted to have the lighting to have a similar feel throughout the space so that it felt fluid, but then they're also just a little bit different so it delineates between each of the spaces. So there's a chandelier over the dining area, and then I have a linear chandelier over the kitchen table. Upstairs is where my bedroom is. I wanted it to feel super tranquil. So the palette in here is mainly neutral tones, different shades of beige and grays to really just make this place just feel really peaceful and just a place that my husband and I could come and relax. I love this bed. The headboard is linen and reclaimed wood. And I love how the bed feels a little bit rustic against more refined pieces within the room, like the crystal chandelier or the gold mirror. So the bathroom just over here, my little eclectic sanctuary. You have the Calcutta marble on the back wall mixed with the black and white geometric tile on the floor. And then it's all sort of brightened up with this peachy color on the walls. I love this home. I really think it exemplifies the eclectic mix of me as a designer, mixing high, low, vintage, and things from our travels. It's very personal to me and who I am. Thank you so much for taking a look. Check out what we've got coming up next on Open House NYC. Wandering around the half acre, you sometimes feel like you've stepped into another world. We'll see you in just a few. Welcome back everyone. Now we're in the Madison neighborhood of Brooklyn to tour this lovingly restored homestead built in 1776. It is a true step back into New York history. See why. Hi, I'm Ira Mont. Welcome to the Wyckoff Bennett Mont Homestead in Brooklyn, New York. Built prior to 1766 by the Wyckoff family. It was a hundred acre farm here in Brooklyn. In 1835, the Wyckoffs sold the house and the farm to the Bennett family. In 1983, the widower of the last Bennett sold the house to my parents, Stuart and Annette Mont. That makes the Mont family only the third family to ever own and live in the home in almost 260 years. Wandering around the half acre, you sometimes feel like you've stepped into another world with its trees, ivy lawn, and grapevines. It really is like having your own private park As you approach the house, walking up the center path, you are struck with the typical Dutch colonial front porch. The main front door of the house is at the original Dutch door, as are all the shutters on the house. During revolutionary times, you were taxed on the number of windows you had in your house. You might notice in the Dutch door the bullseye glass. Those bullseye windows allowed for sunlight in the main hall without incurring a tax. Walking into the main entry hall sets the tone for the rest of the house. Off the main entry hall are two parlors. 
which we call the formal parlor and the informal parlor. Each parlor is a double parlor, one with a fireplace and one without. The family would take coals from the fire into the parlor without the fireplace, which was their sleeping quarters, and warm themselves with those coals. The four parlors and the center entrance hall make for a wonderful space, room to live, work, and a great place to entertain. My parents were always lovers of old homes and antiques, but the thing that convinced them to buy this house was a quote from Gertrude Bennett's book, Living in a Landmark. I often wonder about the future of our house and pray that those after us will love it as we do and respect it for its own personality. That's also my hope for the new owners of the Wyckoff Bennett Mont Homestead. I hope you've enjoyed taking this tour with me. I can't believe the show's already over. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Like and subscribe, because we're going to keep giving you these amazing homes.